All right. We're ready to go. Good evening, everyone. This is the Dunn County Health and Human Services Board for April, Thursday, April 11th. Um, let the record show that the chair is here, Supervisor Hagen, Supervisor Steen, um, Ms. Rudy is virtual. Mr. Lamb and Dr. Hall are here present. We are missing Supervisor Breslin and Supervisor Robinson. This would have been her last um, meeting. All right, uh, we have a set of minutes from our last meeting, which was just a few days ago, <laughs> March 28th. A motion to approve, Supervisor Steen, is there a second? Dr. Hall seconds. Any discussion, additions or corrections? Additions or corrections? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes for March 28th are approved. Do we have any public comment? All right, no public comment. Uh, next meeting date would be our regular. We're back. We'd be back to our fourth uh, Thursday, um, May 23rd. That's oh, still okay with everybody. All right. Uh, I have not placed any items on the agenda, so moving quickly to veteran services. I did talk you up in executive committee yesterday about all of the significant resources that your hard work has returned to the county. I wanted that to be pointed out several times. So, yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll get there one of the days during the during the, the duty day to to oh. so people can see the face. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you're and you're going to talk it up again on that, Tuesday. Yes, right. That is, that is correct. Yes. Um, so I'm briefing by exception uh, this evening based upon the time time frame our, from our last um, mm -hmm. meeting. Um, no, I'll, I'll just mention uh, financial report. There's no updates or changes from the the past financial report, and and in the the few weeks since that meeting, there's nothing that's come come my way of creating any significant concern um, at all. The uh, primary thing that I'd like to emphasize: April 27th, doing a veteran outreach event. We have I think knocking on the door of about 110 pre-registered now, which right. is. Uh, which is great, uh, and I think I mentioned our last um, board meeting. Usually, our, from our our events that we um, will host, our, our baseline like sixty to eighty is typical. So it's so I um, I, I attribute it to um, some of the the uh, kind of the marketing I would say, which has just been more um, staged stuff in the office. There should be something showing up in the uh, Glenwood Tribune Colfax Good. paper probably within the next week that they gave us a a free free spot so i think that and then then word of mouth and then having planning planning committee as well so that's been been helpful um the uh, on yeah where is that going to be held at if I'm uh, the menominee alliance church which is uh, a few blocks north of yeah. uh mayo yeah and it, the venue venue offers we've, we've done a few there um we, we've done one in the years past in this building as well, but it doesn't offer for the volume of um, resource vendors. It doesn't offer uh, the the good visibility space. Where sure. there, they've got the gymnasium, and we put them around the outside, and we kind of capped. I think we've got 26 resources that'll be there. So you you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> grab lunch right in that room and stare at those resources, which they they like as well to um, try to try to get people to to know what they offer. And a number, a number, of course, of our our county partners are going to be there as well, um, with a with a booth. Um, last last Friday, uh, really because of the the uh, event, um, uh, the the Wisconsin Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, Secretary of the Wisconsin Department of Veterans Affairs, had, had registered as well as he actually he was at an event in the area, and so he stopped in, uh, talked on Friday, and uh, and I'm I'm glad because I thought about because I just get crushed with trying to process stuff i'm like i think i'm gonna like shut the door and say we'll call you in like 10 minutes but um <laughs> i was glad that it didn't we didn't do that because then it had a had a good conversation um with the the secretary and and uh again a lot of a lot of times they're just interested in their programs at the state um i gave um direct feedback on the stuff that i absolutely give uh 
uh, a lot of props to the good things that that are going on, and then and then just drew attention to the the areas that he already knows that um, need some uh, improvement, which is the aid to needy veterans grant, which I've briefed that, and you'll see in my um, uh, annual annual report that there was no not even an application that we submitted, and I told him that that we don't we we don't based upon uh, most <clears throat> most um, means tested programs go forward. That is one of the programs that goes back three months. So if you you have a, a job that can pay your rent and, and cover your expenses, you get in a car accident, can't get to work, lose your job, they look back at your wages the previous three months to make a determination, which of course nobody's gonna apply. And so I, I, um, I just requested that if they wanna consider a new model to use um, the majority of all other means tested programs and go yeah. go forward. And so we'll we'll see. They know it's a it's a it's a challenge and that's why they don't they don't get many applications. It, there's also uh, dental and vision that is still within that that line item with the um, Wisconsin Department of Veterans Affairs that that gets used because that is that that's viewed differently than the, the aid to needy need veterans. So we can, um, oftentimes it's just a, uh, a county, um, county median income uh, threshold, which is forward calculating. So um, so we talked about that, it was, uh, it was a good conversation. He's, uh, I, and I informed him how um, our planning committee intends on approaching VIPs uh, because we didn't, and we said we will absolutely announce that if we see the 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 mayor mayor attends as well as any of the congressional reps, but we didn't send out specific um, invites because again to stay a, apolitical uh, on things. And so I told him that if he absolutely attends, we will absolutely inform people that we have the secretary of Wisconsin Department of Veterans Affairs here. So if they'd like to to have a discussion, um, and he, and he's perfectly okay with that because the, the event is for uh, veterans get the resources out, um, and and so just just a tone set. Um, set that environment. Um, so then uh, a couple other things I had mentioned last month about uh, one of the, the programs within the, the Federal Veterans Administration that, that is having some challenges, which is some heightened visibility. Um, and it's, it's uh, the acronym is CHAMP VA, which stands for the Civilian Health and Medical Program of the Department of Veterans Affairs, but there's processing issues. And uh, um, there, there was a response. The um, director of veteran services at St. Croix County sent, uh, got support from our Northwest region to send a, a letter there. And actually our association, we've got a um, conference next week, which we'll be voting on some um, a resolution to send forward a, a letter requesting the support of our congressional representatives to encourage the um, fixing that that program a bit with the processing times. And, and so the response that came back um, it didn't, uh, it bas basically just kind of reiterated like, yep, this, this is, we, we recognize this is wrong and we're really working hard at it. That's my assessment. Um, and it, but it doesn't get into details. And, and when I talk to our congressional reps, um, when they get responses back that, that, um, I, I just reinforce to them that, that they are, um, the responses they get back are things that we already know. That's why we're asking these questions. Right. And and so to get more pointed, more detail on um, solution focus, actual uh, kind of the, the specific specific efforts. So that's more what we'll, I think we'll be looking and voting to try to do next week because cut and paste responses do show effort at responding recognition, but it doesn't talk details about how um, how and timelines um, like to like to know the timeline on stuff. Um, the uh, another another item, the Wisconsin Department of Veterans Affairs, um, Gov Governor Evers had had passed a, uh, a uh, it was announced on on the twenty second um, a few few different laws of recognition that they um, had passed and and one is to they're going to remove the civil service requirement or the exam in order to um, be able to apply for the county veteran service officer grant and and it's it's just, it's an antiquated process and and so it it would hang up some of the hiring of 
of new service offs because technically like if you if you leave one county go to another it, you know you, you'd still want a civil service exam and so that they're removing that as a requirement for the grant counties can still you know you can that still can be done as part of the hiring practice to be able to to determine aptitude um and then they're also identi uh, probably a significant thing is removing the residency requirement for internment in the um state cemeteries uh because there there would be because sometimes that would people have been here they grew up here and and if they weren't here it'd get a little bit a little bit problematic um and there's a couple couple other things so i won't go into too much detail about that and the last uh thing i think is uh significant and this this came out in um one of the local press releases that uh marshfield clinic is is part of their um health record they are adding veteran status and 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 also uh, expo toxic exposure type stuff so i think that that I, my assumption is that, that comes along with them being a provider for the va to just look at uh things things as a whole and and again it's all about the treatment of the of the individual and and to know their their full history if there was some type of toxic exposure to some chemicals may lead them down a, a better or a quicker treatment path. Um, so I think that that's that's a good a good positive uh, thing with the local local healthcare provider. Um, pending any questions, that will be all that I'll, I'll be briefing tonight. Just to, to remind you that you won't have any county board supervisors at the resource event because we have a budget workshop all day that day. And and I won't be at that budget. Workshop either. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I did yes, I did have yeah. a question for you. Mm -hmm. I saw this, it it came from Wisc community, uh, 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 um, a letter from Senator Smith, the the veterans property tax relief bill that would have lowered the the eligibility from a hundred percent to seventy percent apparently just died. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No action. Um yeah, yeah. That, that uh, it's it's big action to get as far as it did, and the okay. support that it did. I, you know, sometimes uh, small wins can be big wins, and and so I think that just the the recognition and the discussion of it, and um, you know, everything comes down to the getting as much support to be able to uh, really, I, I would say, sway votes one way or another and if they're you know, again obviously it didn't hit a threshold for some of the to get some of the additional support throughout the state from some of the representatives but uh i, I look at it as forward progress maybe next time it, yeah it won't it's not going to die on the on the vine with with our association to continue to okay. encourage that because um every state wants to identify that but and even any organization that they're they're different from their counterparts and they're better. And so state of Wisconsin is not, is not any different. They want to identify that they are the best spot for veterans to relocate as well as come here and find jobs, come here, we will accept you and bring your families and, and they've done more and more. So I, I think that that's, that's how that stuff will absolutely continue to get traction and get done. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Greg? Any? Just one? Yes, Supervisor Hagan. Thank you. Uh, with the Marshfield Clinic and the toxic exposure uh, treatment, I guess I was under the assumption that before this, um, most vets were going to Minnesota for treatment um, versus somewhere local. Is Was that correct? Partially correct. Yeah, yeah. A, a few years ago, um, the, the Veterans Administration uh, it expanded. I'm trying to think of the um of the the law that was passed that basically allowed community care for veterans so there wasn't it, it it would not take as long to get treatment and and so they it initially started as the veterans choice program then it expanded to um it escapes me right now but where if for our local veterans if it takes more than an hour to to get that specialty care which would only be provided at the main hospital in minneapolis or, or toma then, then they were automatically qualified for community care. Marshfield is a provider, Mayo is a provider, Prevea, and there's a number of other Everclear, I think, Audiage, a, a number of those providers. So now the veterans can choose to go to many, and some do, 
because they, they again you like your provider but they have this as an option and and the the I'll, I'll clarify the the part is just to recognize toxic exposure you know the treatment aspect you sure. know you, you just to yeah so whatever condition you have they're going to be able to they're going to they want to recognize it and and so that that's i guess hopefully that answers your question yeah so this just is allowing more uh options for them to stay local yeah. versus having to travel uh that that has that's been in play for a couple of years what this is is just the hospital now collecting the fact that hey you're identifying as a veteran so there might be yeah. more that that that's going on as well as hey we're going to build this correct now if if, if you have right. an authorization sure, sure. Sure. okay all right thank you yeah you're welcome all right any other questions for greg all right moving on thank you greg um public health is up next very quick verbal update for you guys this month uh we are in the hiring process for our public health educator you guys will know that uh, the backbone support for health done right did take an amazing full-time position with the city of menominee so continuing to be a great partner however that leaves us with a bit of a vacancy so all of the managers are taking time and and helping to support health done right and we are excited to get that position filled we have second interviews scheduled for monday um, and uh, super excited to see that we had a lot of very, I would say overqualified, but very qualified applicants. And so hopefully we'll be able to uh, make an offer early next week and get yeah. that filled just ASAP and get health done right the support that it needs. Yeah. Um, also wanted to share that we have uh, had a continued conversation with our partners over at Stout. We are expecting urgent care to close its doors on the 19th. And so that really does impact students that use the Purveya contract through UW Stout. They are working to finalize a contract with an on site provider, um, hopefully by the end of the month. And then at that point, they'll make that public. Um, so that's, that's good. We're still, um, especially over the summer, on on um, notice, so if there needs to be additional support, especially for folks seeking reproductive health services, that we can step in and provide that for folks as needed. So that's an update for you guys. Um, I would also share that um, we are hopeful that both our annual report will, because we do by statute have to submit that in May, and um, our community health assessment will be in its final form and in your packet for May's um, uh, meeting. So that's all I've got for right now. All right, good. Any questions for KT? Dr. Hall. So it's not a question, but it's a request for the annual report. So they've often been really, really beautiful, <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> when there's a background <laughs> color and then the font isn't black so like the background color is like green and then the font color is a slightly darker green <laughs> so so just for readability for those of us whose eyes are getting older if maybe some attention to sufficient contrast in the design of the report they're beautiful but sometimes they're hard to read i love that so we well done, through Dr. health on right uh and some of our public health arpa dollars um, HEAT, our uh, Healthy Environment Action Team, actually lifted that up as a concern for uh, accessibility in our online presence. And so we purchased some software that the county uses on the website to give that uh, awareness. We should also apply that to our own stuff. Thank you so much for lifting that up. Well done. Madam yes, Supervisor Steen. If I may, I'd like to thank our resident ophthalmologist there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's all of us with the older eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so Polly, um, if you have any questions, just just shout, okay? All right. Uh, moving on to human services, we will have some a couple of action I'm, items. I'm sorry, did you want to uh, just touch on finances? Absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry for moving you ahead nope. too quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. So you guys have a snip of our budget as we see it in SAP. What you will notice is that it is wildly um, not accurate. Uh, so part of those things are pretty explainable. So we have some December 
um, salary and fringe, which is the majority of our budget is salary and fringe, is still posting to uh, this year. Be it will work itself out with the averages, but right now, um, because of when the paychecks fell, we have a couple days, um, actually more than a couple days of December in here as well. So that's one thing. Mm. Two thing, uh, second thing is ERP. We're still moving some of the salary and fringe for the additional support for both myself and for our public health nurse manager to the ERP cost center. They're still reflected here. So that's a, another thing that is showing an increase in salary and fringe. I do want to share that we are so much better this year than we were last year as far as people landing in their appropriate cost centers. Uh, we had very minor issues this um, setup versus last year when we were still dealing with predominantly grant funded folks in public health admin. So kudos to the new hires over in finance. They have done a tremendous job to um, start with a much cleaner budget. Um, that being said, nothing looks uh, other than those things that we just talked about. Nothing else stands out for you guys to um, to lift up for you guys. All right. Any questions on the these not great financials <laughs> for March. All right, thank you, KT. Anything else before I interrupt you again? All right, um, Human Services, Ms. Winter, you are on. I am reminded tonight how challenging it is to take notes and yes. be part of this and how grateful I am when Becky or Cassie um, are here. Will, as, be, will Cassie be back soon? And that was part of my presentation okay. is that Cassie... <laughs> Diane I'm just interrupting the everybody tumble, tonight. Doesn't she? <laughs> yes, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> Cassie is returning on April 25th which would have been our normal meeting and to make her work a meeting that night on her first yep. day back would not have been so kind. So thank you for um, <laughs> accommodating the multi reasons for changing the meeting. Um, and so, yes, it will be a delight to have her back. I'm sure it will take a little while to get back into the swing th things. It's been, you know, multiple months, but we're looking forward to having her back. And um, she brought Cooper in last week, 10 pounds, and he's just delightful, just oh, a little bundle. Good. I got some snuggle time, so that oh, was really good. fun. Good. So, and fun to see Cassie, of course. So. All right, so I am facilitating a housing meeting tomorrow afternoon, and this is a combination between HAT with the Health Done Right and the Education and Advocacy kind of subgroup of the housing work group, the county housing work group. And what we're focusing on, as I said, education and advocacy. So looking at how do we help the community of Dunn County to really look at the housing issue, to even recognize that there's a housing issue, what kind of marketing are we going to do to, um, to move this issue forward, and certainly to look at it from all levels, because that is the message that we want um, people to hear, or that we hope people hear is it's not just for low income, it's for all income, all different levels and types of housing, um, and to be able to market that in a way that um, can um, address that in multi um, fashions and um, people. And so I'm, I'm excited about doing that tomorrow and having people voluntarily come in and help with that planning and putting a planning together. I am very excited to announce and I don't know what I did with my paper, but I can do it because I, um, with both the paper, because I nominated our Family Treatment Court Program to the Secretary's Department of Children Families um, Award for caring for children and making, you know, um, progress, um, innovative ideas and working as a team. Um, and they received the award. You should yeah. have seen it. We it came in the it's office, so and I was just waiting, waiting, waiting because it was a couple of weeks after it was due, you know. And I got the email, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> you could have seen me run down the hall, and you know, yes. give, uh, Lori Radcliffe and team a big hug because like they so deserve this. They've worked so hard on that program, and really, what it demonstrates is the the teamwork and you know describing in there our outcomes because we have the data that shows we have less kids in placements we have sooner reunification so kids coming home sooner and um, less tprs and that's really attributed to this program and the people that 
um, we call it voluntary. So, you know, they, they agree to do this because they hope that the outcomes um, will um, help them get their kids back sooner, all of those things. And they work really hard. To, if they get through that program and graduate, they work really hard, but the team also. So, you know, the things that normally we see in the child protection world of kids, I could tell you, kids hiding from law enforcement because they've been taught if there's a law enforcement, you hide. So when you're with them, they duck under the picnic table or whatever because they're fearful of these people or they they um, have seen or, you know, had interactions that maybe were not so well or seen what happened with their parents. So having kids sit across the picnic table talking to officers, talking to the judge, eating cake with them, um, you know, having a picnic with them and um, and having the participants, um, the adults really connect with those individuals as well, along with all of the community partners and um, therapists and all the wonderful things that are happening. And to just see all of that run so smoothly, it didn't happen overnight because you start these things and it takes a long time to go. We finally getting here. And so um, it's very exciting that they got the award and we're going down to Madison on the 23rd, I think it is, to meet the secretary to receive the award. Excellent. So, yes, very excited about that. You can't tell, can you? But I'm very excited that they got <laughs> that award. And we're going to celebrate that at the all-staff meeting. I'm making four cakes, and we're going to celebrate. <laughs> Dr. Hall, do you have a question? I do. So are we lifting that up and celebrating it? Is there a press release happening? There was a press release. Okay. Um, Doug Mel did a press release okay. on Facebook and Facebook. he sent it out to different media. So hopefully, okay. yeah. And maybe when you go down to get the award get too, we change. can yep. take advantage of that opportunity yep. to celebrate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Good things happening. So I really appreciate that. And it's exciting. Um, I, I had a nice meeting with Tracy Fisher this week regarding um, some things happening in the ADRC, and that was really fun. She shared that, um, you know, it's only been about a month and a half that Casey has um, increased her position to, from halftime to full time. And she talked about that here, about mm -hmm. the community development and work and um, partnership with that and community promotions. And um, that unit is on fire. They are out in the community promoting things. They were at Stout. They met with Step. I'm doing this. You, this isn't stepping stones, but there's a connection. <laughs> there's right? a connection. Sorry about that, KT. So, <laughs> um, so met with stepping stones, and they're fighting over who's going to have a, a station there to meet with people and to work with individuals. And so they decided that they need two stations at stepping stones because you know not only do we want to promote some of the health promotion type things, but also the disability benefit specialist says I really need to connect with some of these people because they could really benefit from this. So they're fighting over who's going to do it. And finally, Patrick said, let's give up two. So there, you know, just some really good community things. There's the INA want to um, set up um, booths at different um, churches after after the um, service. Thank you for the word because I use I use mass, but it's service. Yes. Yeah. So um, different um, at different all the different locations in the community and have the ADRC information out there to be able to market. Cause you know, of course it is um, know us before you need us. And so trying to get that okay. promotion, health promotion stuff out there. So that's really fun. They're putting in some stuff on Facebook. They're going to do a calendar with the outreach events and those kinds of things. So that was really fun. Some bad news is that we received notice that the independent living support pilot program that was the program that um, we are lead for Chippewa, mm -hmm. Eau Claire, and Dunn counties for people that are just a little bit above that income range that don't make or um, don't qualify for family care, but there's some funding for that. They announced that that pilot program will be ending March 31st of 2025. We were hoping that if it was successful that they would continue, but it was ARPA funds and apparently yeah. They're not renewing it. So um, we know we have a limited time to um, do the great work that needs to be done to get those funds out and case manage and those kinds of things. So there's that piece, which is challenging, um, especially for those employees, you know, to yeah. they knew that there was a potential. But so I hope we don't lose any of them before that date because we still have a lot of work to do. But so there was good and bad kind of stuff going on. So um, 
Yep, that's all that I have for my report. Is there any questions or anything? Any that... questions for Paula? I'm going to say to all three of you, I, we probably don't say this enough, but a lot of the kind of recognition that uh, Dunn County receives and your departments receive and your work receive is because of the leadership of the three of you. And I mean, I certainly hope you know how much we respect and value your leadership and are ever so grateful for all of the really hard and really good work that you do every day. Thank you. It means a lot. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And the KT's, the public health got a uh, uh, recognition to uh, uh, not, not an award, but a good review. Did I make that up? No. You, you did. You you sent an you sent an an email about um, a site visit. Oh sure. A site visit. I'm sorry, I was using the wrong language. Site visit report. Yes. yes. And and that'll go in your board packet. Um, sorry for. Being remiss on that, we had our annual site review for the Vaccine for Children program, right? And it went um, incredibly well, and no um, action items, not even recommendations. Um, so uh, I think this just something to be said for our team that have delivered vaccines to folks that want them for a very long time and really know how to do it well and safely. So um, yes, thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, well done. All right. Um, anything else? All right, we have a couple of action items. Uh, review of the, <clears throat> excuse me, of the uh, March vouchers. The amount of this month is $841,427.15, and they all looked pretty normal, given my read. A motion to note review, Supervisor Steen. Do I have a second? Dr. Hall seconds. Any questions? Further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Vouchers are noted. And we have there, you'll find it in your packet. We discussed it last month, but two resolutions on um, uh, drilling without a permit and the community, I always have to read it, the community, no, transient non-community water systems. I cannot get that one in my head. Do you wanna go ahead with this? KT? Sure. So like the chair had shared, we did talk about that at length. Uh, Jeff was here last meeting to, to talk that through. This is a policy change, which is why it's in front of you. We have not issued um, this type of fee before. And so we're just connecting with you guys mm -hmm. to ask um, you to make a to formally recognize that we can do that moving forward. Again, this is not a budgetary item. This is really to provide a disincentive from doing something that legally they should not be doing anyway. Um, drilling without a well, if they are in the wrong place or, or doing it inappropriately, we could have contamination of the water system. Um, and then really to reduce the amount of um, running around that we need to do when we have a late fee. So somebody that has a license, um, but they don't pay it for several months. Uh, we send several um, please and thank you emails, letters, knock on doors, phone calls, that kind of thing. And this is just one of those um, disincentives to be tardy on paying bills that they know that they have. All right. And I'm going to take these up individually, probably not necessarily just to make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's. Um, so adopting drilling without a permit is up. I need a motion. Move Mr. So. Lamb, uh, Supervisor Hagan seconds. Did you have a question, Mr. Lamb? No. No. Okay. Uh, Supervisor Steen. Uh, this, uh, does this address the homeowner or the well driller? Or both? So one is for the well driller. Okay. So that's the drilling without a permit. Right. And then the other one is for the transient non-community water system. It's not a homeowner, it's a place of business. So yeah, typically okay. like a tavern or um, a campground or something along those lines. But, but this one specifically is for the well driller. Yeah. Well driller. My, my question basically is, are we going to punish the driller and or the, the, the driller? Home? Yeah, the driller. Okay. Thank you. The driller. All right. Any further questions? Any discussion? 
If not, all in favor of adopting drilling without a permit fee, Health and Human Services Board Committee resolution, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. And the next one resolution is the late fee for the transient non-community water system. So it's a campground or a hotel or whatever. And if they don't pay it, we're going to charge them a little bit to cover the staff work. I need a motion on this one. <laughs> Supervisor Hagen and Dr. Hall seconds. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, both pass and they will go to the board. No, that's right. We we have final authority on this, so that's always good. That would be so. I reported it yesterday a little bit in exec. I didn't go into huge detail, but well. not. Okay. I think not. All right. I think we have an announcement. Thank you. So I am passing around copies of a research poster from a stout student from a project that she did this past summer as part of the Lakes RU program. And I had the opportunity to see this poster um, <clears throat> just last week and talk with the student who did the research and ask her about it. And so the study that she did was looking at um, how much trust people in Dunn County felt uh, toward different sources of information about quality of drinking water. So asked how much they trusted information from state government, local government, county health, local environmental groups, the EPA, CDC, university scientists, and friends and family. And so what I want to point out here, and if you have more questions about it, I'm happy to tell you later, but the key thing is that 90% of respondents trusted information from the county health department about drinking water. And that was way higher than anything else. So then the next highest one was local government at slightly more than 80%, which is also fabulous. And when I was talking with the student about this, she said that people would continually say, well, I know these people and I interact with these people and they, they tell it to me straight and I know they're good people and we've worked with them um, over time. And so I just want to thank everybody like in the, the county government and particu particularly in public health and environmental health for really working to make those connections with people and meeting people where they're at and keeping everything matter of fact and straightforward and we're here to help. And that relationship building really pays off. And I know it's intentional and I know it's hard work and it's not always easy. Um, but I was just blown away to see the level of trust and confidence that people have in our county health department. This was specifically around drinking water. I'm sure if we asked about some other topics, <laughs> it wouldn't be as high. Um, but but also given that, right, that there was, you know, a lot of reaction and distrust in response to COVID and other things to still see such a high level of confidence in um, our county health department when it comes to drinking water quality was just I just had to share it. I just thought that was wonderful. So thank you, KT, and her department for all of your work and um, everybody at the county really for building those relationships and, and working on transparency and communication because it is definitely paying off. And our land and water conservation people who, who do work yes. directly with the public health department. And so it's this it's great. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see this. Mr. Lamb. But uh yeah, this is fantastic. Um what uh, department is she in? She references the program directors, but I don't know what uh, the program is. is. Do you know? Yeah, so this is a stout student who um, she's graduating this May, actually, with a degree in applied social science. And um, but she did this project as part of what's called the Lakes REU, which is a federally funded student research summer experience. Um, and then so, you know, the the program directors and mentors listed there are the people who help run that program. And it's a fairly large program and it is yeah. five, six years old. At least 
it's a it's a major grant and they bring students in from all over the country uh, in the summer to do a variety of research. Some of it's physical science. Obviously, some of it is social science and it's fabulous. And there's always a poster session in August mm -hmm. at the raw deal. And it's a and it's a it's a it's a fun thing to do. And the work of these kids is really quite remarkable. Yeah, Supervisor Hagen. Thank you. Um, when was all this data gathered? When did this project start? I'm curious. As, yeah, I'm trying to look on here when this happened. I just am trying to figure out in my head when she collected this data versus when um, all the samples were going out to get tested from all the various wells around the county. And I was wondering if there was a, a cross pollination of uh, county trust during that time period. Maybe that helped. Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably summer. It's a good question. It would have been this past summer, yeah. So, so it might have been um, an overlap on both, yeah. And that just goes to speak to the point about our county government being out there and talking with people where they're at, as you said, if it did indeed um, happen uh, concurrently. Yeah, great. Well, thank you for sharing this. Anything else? Yes, KT. One other quick announcement about Jim Gill and our children's um, concert next Thursday in this room and the next room. Um, we will have, um, I think, like animal balloon animals and um, uh, resources and music and lots of stuff for littles. So if you have time and interest, please join us. Time? Uh, it starts at four. Music starts at five. All right. See you then. All right. And good luck on the resource fair, Greg. And sorry that we can't be there as we are studying the studying the budget. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.